What is happening guys? Campo back here again. Um, I wanted to make another one, another quick one because yesterday I mentioned that I was, well, mentioned, I briefly talked about the comics and everything I've been into and why I'm into it, all that sort of jazz. Um, I really just wanted to make this one today, just kind of show you guys which ones I'm reading, which ones I've read. Um, Cause you see all the videos, how people where they jump in and everything, how to start comics and everything. But if you got like not a lot of time, not a lot of, not a lot of uh, like heaps of cash on you, like enough to get by. Good thing about comics, it's very cheap. Um, but yeah, these are the ones I started out with just because I like these characters. I just picked those characters or I heard them online. Like <clears throat> for example, I've always loved Spider Man. I've loved Batman. I've loved Deadpool. I love oh, fuck. Who else have I got here? I love the Punisher, I love Daredevil, um, but I've got a bunch here, and the ones I will start with today. I was recently watching the movie um, John Wick, number four, and it made me think about Keanu Reeves' comic book, and I was like, well, screw it, I'm going to buy the whole series, um, I'm going to buy the whole series and just fucking so smash it out. This is the volume two book. I've got all the other ones at home, but it's a uh, berserker. This one is, I'll tell you what, the, the story is pretty good. It's not, and it's not incredible. Very, it is very action. So that's uh, issue 10. Um, like, and that's like, uh, so the first, first, let's say six, seven issues, I think towards eight. It's all about just this dude who's immortal and he's lived throughout time and he's just, he just fucking kills people. He goes into this mode called the Berserker mode and he just like, he can't see reality, he just murders. Um, and it's a blend between modern times where these people, this therapist is trying to help him out, understand who he is and why he's like he is, to, and then it goes back in time, like visions and everything about. Uh, what he did throughout his life because he remembers everything he just doesn't remember like the very start sort of thing or so the main story is him just trying to figure it that shit out so the the thing i love about berserker like even got keanu reeves right at the run right the names in the front there um the thing i like about it, it's a very simple story for that first eight volume and, that, and then after the, the for the next couple issues after that it kind of tiles it up to 11 and it tries to explain his background and it gets pretty confusing, not gonna lie. Um, gets into like cosmic and like, it doesn't fully explain it, but it leaves it open for another another series, which is pretty cool. Um, but I do like the action. I love the design. The action scenes are very full on. Um, I will admit the art style itself, um, the art style itself, isn't like incredible, but it's it's like it has a sense of basic of a basic feel to it. But I love the actual design of the of the comic series. They feel it feels very high budget. The feel, the paper, the design of the book, the artwork is to me like very good. Uh, the story is very very uh keeps it very entangled with uh, morality and like what would actually be like to be immortal and i i think if it really does feel like keanu reeves did put himself his ideas into this that's what it feels like to me at least so this is the volume two here this has got quite a few issues it it is very gory has a lot of action a lot of action it is fucking wicked um if you love high pace high action comics then the first well actually all of it's high uh, high pace high action it just kind of slows a little bit down towards the end of the series um but yeah here's another great one there so yeah i i reckon it's a good one like if you want to i mean for me it was a great one to start off with just purely because um purely because it's a nice easy read it's like i know that i'd said the complicated story towards the end but overall it actually is a nice easy read i didn't take too long going through the pages like 
there wasn't too much dialogue in between things so it's more about the, the the gore and the action like literally like a john wick movie like you don't care you don't care that much about the story you, you care enough to be intrigued but you don't care that much to the point where you're like you just you, you want to see what uh, you want to see the origins more than the action you want to see the action more than the origin but you do care enough about the origin to kind of like make sense of what's going on so if uh, i'll definitely give this a recommend to anybody if you're just starting out reading comics or just want to try a new different series um if you're looking for a very uh complicated um very complicated very high story arc and everything um like a game of thrones like that sort of level of storytelling you're not going to find it in this what you are going to find is a like a cool action movie that's a bit of a confusing sort of like origin but plays with morality a bit plays with um the 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 concept of immortality um this is probably the one you might be interested in so that's what i've been reading i'm gonna put that over there for now i've also been reading well deadpool the newest deadpool series this is issue four i've got all the other ones at home i just got, didn't have enough room to for carrying everything so i wanted to like get a new deadpool series i've read i've watched heaps online um so i'm gonna sit my clock i watched heaps of stories online i love the movies i love deadpool as a character i've always enjoyed just a nice just funny comedy concept of um a character that can break the fourth wall that it doesn't is not afraid to say what he does and he's like almost unstoppable at the same time this is i what i feel like and what i've seen online it feels like a very classic deadpool story it's literally it's just, I won't give you full. Uh, I won't give you full spoiler, but it's just him. He's high. Uh, he wants to be part of this assassin group. He goes out and he has to complete a kill, and everything goes sideways. Um, this other villain comes into it. There's other, like there's another villain. Uh, another villain that uh, a very recognizable one. There's a new villain, and then it leads into another villain, and it's like it, it's it's just it just spirals, and and it's just him commentating the whole time, having fun. It's a love interest. It's a very classic Deadpool story. Um, it's a, I'm pretty sure it's the newest one right now in the storylines. Uh, I'm still learning, but I'm pretty darn sure it's the newest one in the storylines. This isn't the latest issue. I'm pretty sure they're on latest um, issue six. I've got it at home. Um, but yeah, the artwork, the artwork and, sorry, I haven't even opened this one. I accidentally bought two of issue four because it's uh, a long story, but pretty much I thought that I already had this. But no, I didn't already have this, so I bought another one. But I'll open it up here. Okay, so issue four. It does, every issue of this has quite a bit of action, but it's like craziness. I won't show you that part because that was a bit too much of a spoilers. But yeah, like the artwork, the artwork feels very... I'm not trying to be, and this isn't a negative thing, but like basic, like a basic comic book, like basic comic book. It's just fun, fun. He breaks the fourth wall. The comment, the jokes land They're actually very funny. The action is quite good. The story is like, is actually surprisingly interesting, but not, it's a very simple story as well. It's just, yeah, like I said, Deadpool goes down, uh, I guess, Tries to do one thing and everything spirals out of control. It evolves into something else. Um, that's all I will say about the story. Highly recommend if you are into Deadpool at all. What else do I got? So I've got this icon on the screen here. I just realized I'm nearly at the 10 minute mark and I've only gone through two comics so far. Um, what else do I got? Okay, I've got quite a bit here, actually, to be honest. I might have to break this down as a two-parter. But the last one I would say for now is I've got Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo. This is the latest issue. This is issue six. I've just read this one last night uh, of this issue. I've read the other ones. It is actually fantastic. Um, I, to me, like everyone has a different sort of level of Batman stories, like the Justice League level, to the Bat Family level, to the solo Batman. This is kind of the level I really enjoy. 
It's predominantly focused on just Batman. Um, Nightwing is in it at some point, um, but it's predominantly, I like the solo Batman stuff, the detective stories, um, the twists and turns of that. I don't, it's not to say I don't mind, I don't like the Justice League in that, but for me, I've always loved Batman on a more lower scale and it really focuses on his personality and what's going on in Gotham. To me, that's what I predominantly enjoy. Um, this is exactly that. And the thing I really love about this series um, is, well, the start off, the design. The cover is really nice. Like, you can really tell they put a bit of money into this one. You can feel by the feel of it. It's it's fantastic. The design of the comic books, like, the feel of it, it. The artwork's really good. This is probably my favorite, uh, uh, favorite design and artwork I've heard of a, all the all the comics I'm reading right now. It's real sketchy, has really dark, has a real darkness to it, real light, a lot of, a lot of straight lines, but in a way that really works, and it's like, in a long span picture, it keeps it basic, but you can tell what's going on, even up to the close-ups, where, let's say, for example, um, yeah, it gets very gory, it's very good. So, the story with this one is pretty much, I'll give you a quick start of the story. So pretty much Batman is investigating a murder at the start um, and the suspect things, uh, people have seen that it looks like the Joker, but the Joker wasn't there. Um, it was, he was somewhere else. And Batman finds that is a mutant of, that uh, looks like the Joker. So he's thinking what the hell's going on here. And then towards the end of the first issue, the Joker comes in and is like, look, someone's stolen Harley Quinn. I've stolen Jim Gordon. You have to work with me. We both need to figure out what the hell's going on here. Hence why they call Batman, the Joker, the deadly duo. Fantastic story so far. I really enjoyed it. There was a good twist halfway through. Um, I kind of did see the twist coming, but still it's, it's very detective-y. It like, really becomes real detective. It's very dark. If you like a dark Batman story where people get murdered left, right, and center, he's trying to stop all this from happening. The Joker is hilarious and gritty and horrible piece of shit, but it's fantastic. I love this. Is exactly what sort of Batman story I'm into. Um, highly recommend it. So, pretty much all the story comics I'm reading right now, I recommend. Like, if you are into these characters, um, I'm loving that story so far. Right, screw it, we're just gonna do it all the way. Okay, so the next one I'm reading, which is coinciding with another story, is the Dead, new Daredevil series. This Daredevil series, far out. This one and The Punisher are probably my favorite stories out of the bunch right now. Like, it, it, what do I even begin? The artwork is incredible. The drawings are incredible. I, I'll find a particular one picture for example during the story like this one plays with philosophy so much it's like where Daredevil has just come out of a horrible situation with Twist of Fisk and um and he actually is forced to leave New York he wants to start his own ninja clan and he wants to stop the hand that's pretty much the basics of it uh basis of what's going I won't explain anymore it gets very worldwide um Gets kind of like a philosophical, oh, not kind of, very philosophical. It's a lot of flashbacks on his life. Um, he's trying to change the world a little bit. Where is this? I'm trying to find this particular picture to show you a good example. Oh, okay, well, we'll go with this one. This isn't the one, but for example, like it, it's, it's very high action. The story isn't like, the story is so good. Has very or has a lot of characters in the Marvel universe, and where it leads down the line, I'm actually need to buy the latest issue. I'm on I'm on issue ten or eleven. I think it's up to that I'm getting into. It is. I can't remember what I was saying, but it it is fantastic. It has so many cameos as like characters like Spider Man, the Avengers, Elektra is awesome. Um, the Punisher comes into it. That was part of this storyline, which I'll be talking about in a minute. Uh, out of the comics I'm reading right now, the story of this one is by far my favorite 
and the Punisher story. And I'm gonna count that as one story because they are coinciding in storylines. It is fantastic. Um, I can't say more about it. Highly recommend it if you are into a, it's not too dark, but it really plays on what it means to be a hero, what, how to change the system, where, where the world lies with Matt and Matt Murdock and how like depressing his life is, but how he, no matter what, he wants to make a change. Um, high ninja action it is, uh, red cap 10 out of 10, easily bang it, bang. Daredevil Electra, get the series, it's the latest one, it's fantastic. And that is coinciding with The Punisher. I've always loved The Punisher. Um, watched many, many YouTube videos online. I've watched, just watched the latest series. Not the latest series, came out years ago, but I finally found time to watch it. I've always liked The Punisher because it always felt like it was the, to me, it felt like the action superstar. Sorry, I thought I heard something. The action superstar of the Marvel Universe. Just like the, the just the unstoppable man that just, will just kill anything that gets in his way, but only kills the bad guys. Fucking fantastic. So this one, high action. It's very gruesome, very creepy. I think this is probably the best Punisher story. It really delves into his past, like quite a lot. Like, it's just, it's like if Frank Castle turned into a ninja, um, he, the story is pretty much the hand, the uh, assassin group, the hand has come to him with a proposal he can't refuse um, and to become their leader because he's prophesized to be the fist of the beast, um, the king of the killers. It's fantastic. It shows how they bring him into the fold, how he just murders everything. Um, it shows how dark, like his dark background, how he became the Punisher, eventually leading to issue 10 where he... Finally, uh, when his family dies, um, that's not a story. Like, if you know the Punisher, you know that's happened. That's why he's the Punisher. Um, it shows the PTSD, shows the, the raw anger. It delves into, is, it, is he just a war dog? Or is he actually a human that's just been pushed to this length? It really plays in if he's always was always meant to be this, or did he become this? Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, what else can I say about it? It's... Highly recommend. So it really it coincides with the Daredevil comic. So if you're gonna read one, you gotta read the other. It's it, it really all around a ten out of ten storylines. I love it. And last one I've been reading is the Spider-Man series. I actually haven't read the last few issues here. I've only just ordered these ones. I've read all the other ones. Um, these are the latest ones. So this is uh, uh, well Wells Romita Jr.'s run. Um, I actually haven't even read, yeah, like I said, I haven't read these issues yet, but I've all read all the other ones. Um, I've always loved Spider-Man, a kid, like, he was my favourite growing up. Uh, he was, like, I think he was everyone's favourite growing up. Uh, but, with, oh, fix that in a minute. But this story, it, it shows, like, at start, I, I, when I first got it, I was thinking, oh, shit, I haven't read the other ones, this, like, I haven't read the latest ones, um, leading up to it. I think it really just, it's meant to be like that. You're meant to not know why Peter's acting like this. Like Mary Jane's got a husband with kids, but it's not Peter. Um, and, uh, and then Peter's really broody. He's depressed more than he usually is. And But when he's Spider-Man, he's still peppy and fun. Um, but something has changed. And I was thinking, I was thinking, oh, Shit, uh, this must be something different in the storyline, but no, no, it's actually meant to be like that. And I think these latest issues are going to explain why. And this is issue 21. So it's a real classic Spider Man story. Uh, actually, no, I wouldn't say classic. It has a lot of classic elements in it. He's fighting bad guys, he's trying to get ahead in life, but he's always pushed down. Um, but yeah, always has this new sense of like even more depression. He's dating the cat, black cat, sorry. Um, and he, uh, if you like Spider-Man, like real classic Spider-Man, then I don't know. You might like it, you might not. This one's like, it's different, but has classic elements of them. So I wouldn't dismiss it straight away if you're not, like, give it, give it a chance. Like, 
for me, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's I'm, especially the tombstone arc in the first fall, uh, volume I read, first five issues. I think that was actually my favorite part was the first five issues because tombstone actually is like shows how smart tombstone actually is. Um, and like, and shows, I won't spoil anything, but shows like what he can actually bring to the table besides his physical strength. Um, and then it goes in after that. Well, actually, the Dark Web series arc is actually very good that we get to it and shows it has Hobgoblin, it has all the classic villains in it, which I'm really enjoying. Um, yeah, I can't even think of one villain that wasn't in it. That I, or maybe Craven. If you're looking for Craven, he's not in this series. Uh, but the rest of them are all in there at some point. Um, not not the not the most amazing series, but I'm enjoying it nonetheless, and I want to see it through. Um, if you love if you love Spider Man, I reckon you still will like it. Just know that he's a bit more sad in this storyline, and things are happening, and you won't really find the answer as to why he's more broody and depressed, and why Mary Jane's with another guy until this issue apparently. So. Prepare that you won't get to uh, you get to issue twenty. You read twenty issues without knowing why he's uh, in this state. Um, okay, I've already I've already rambled on for twenty one minutes at this point. All right, those are the comics I've read and are reading still, and I'm more than I am can't wait to keep finding more. I'm thank you guys for watching as always, and I will see you in the next one.